Hey everybody, this is Brett Tadlock, TN Artist. Just wanted to uh, hop on here today and do a landscape painting. I'm using Rebel 5 right now. This is actually Rebel 5 Pro that I'm using. And so I'm going to be using a couple different things. If you haven't checked this out yet, make sure to uh, do so. And you can get a copy of it. There's an affiliate link down below if you want to use that. It doesn't cost you anything extra to do so, but it does help support the channel. But I wanted to do this uh, landscape here because I thought this would be a great way to kind of showcase some of the different tools that are available in Rebel 5, uh, especially Rebel 5 Pro. So what I've done here is I've sketched out this, this drawing and just kind of a, you know, a simple little barn kind of painting kind of thing we're going to do. And there's a decent amount of elements here and, and it, I may change some of it. It may be a little crowded. I'm not sure yet. Um, may change it may not but the reason i have it like this is just really so i can show you some different ways to use rebel and to use the tools here so that you can get different effects and that kind of stuff so over here what we have uh, set up i'm just going to be using the standard brushes that come with rebel i have the colors over here i went ahead so in the uh, window here you have a lot of different pre-done color sets that you can access Okay, there are free ones as well on the Rebel website, so you can jump over there and do that. And the one I'm going with right here is this watercolor pigment because, and I have it set to show the name. Okay, uh, mainly because I come from a traditional art background, so this is a great way for me to uh, just kind of reference something quickly that I know what it looks like and know what it, how it should act. I also have it set to the real pigment, and that way I can do it and. Uh, I have it sketched out here as well. The tilt, if you've never used this before, so basically when you turn this on, the canvas, if you think about this being the top of the canvas, and if I move, turn it on, and then drag this down, I'm tilting down towards this way. So now the canvas is angled with this end up, and everything I put on here will run down this way. If I do it going this way, every, this end is up, and everything is running this way, and so forth. So that's how the tilt works, and you can move it around and get some really interesting effects with that. And I'll probably be using that because I want to try and play around with some of the effects that I can get. So I've got the line art on its own layer here. I usually keep the line art uh, pretty much preserved. I, it's, it's really my roadmap for everything, so I'm not tied 100% to it. I just like to have it to reference back, especially when I'm doing stuff like uh, perspective and that kind of stuff as well. So um, if you want this drawing, uh, I'll have it available. I'll put it on my Gumroad site, so that way you can download it for free from there and be able to get that. But hopefully you'll join along with me and get this loaded in there and then come back and, and follow along and paint so I think you'll like this and again this is just a really rough thing I used the pencil tool and then I drew out these lines if you're not familiar with how to do that if you hold um, shift like right now I've got the acrylic brush so I'm going to pick this really big swath here uh, but if I push shift you see how this line comes out and then I go and tap now it'll just paint on that line see so that's how I drew these lines here. I just did, took the pencil and I did shift and then kind of said, okay, I want my perspective there. And then I drew it and then shift and so forth. And so that's how I drew these out. Um, it's an easy way to get a nice straight line. And, and the really the easiest way to think about it, it's just a ruler. You're using a ruler and go with that. So this is one of the default canvases that I have uh, selected here. I have it set to eight uh, and a half, eight inches by 10 inches. So eight inches by 10 inches. Uh, I think that's an A4 for anybody that's outside the U.S. or somewhere around there. And uh, I have it set to 150 DPI, mainly just because I find that that causes less strain on my system while it's recording and, and everything else. But the nice thing about this is I can use the NanoPixel export to blow this up to, you know, huge uh, if I want to. So I'll probably use that if this turns out how I like it. So let's dive into this. And, and get started. So what I'm going to do right here is I'm going to start with the background and kind of block in my colors for where I want them. Okay. And I usually work on a couple different layers just because I like that for digital. Um, Rebel is the closest to traditional that I found. And so I will sometimes not work as many layers, but for right now I'm going to, and I think that's a great way for you to make sure that you're able to control uh, everything as far as the way it looks and so forth. So I'm going to put a little bit of blue in here, this Prussian blue, 
I'm going to take a little bit of this permanent green right here and kind of smear it on as well. And now you do have a mixing palette right here that you can use. I just like doing it on the canvas. So I'm just going to smear this around a little bit and let it kind of interact. I could even, if I wanted to, take the water tool. Now I usually just press W because then it doesn't turn the whole screen blue for where the water is. And I'm just going to put this on here and let that react. And see how it kind of reacted there? And if I push D, it'll pause the diffusion. And then I can take the, uh, I can do Shift A and go back to the acrylic brush or the oil, the quick oil brush. Alt and select this color that I want. It's kind of this bluish green and tap quick dry. And so this is still damp, but it's not going to be running now because when I turn off D, you'll see that it doesn't run anymore. And now I can kind of scrub this in a little bit more. Like so. And this just lets me kind of quickly play around with the color. I can even go here a bit darker. This is almost like a phthalo green kind of looked. So right now I'm just scrubbing in for where I want the background to be. Not overly worried about anything. In fact, I can just go over everything here. But I love how you get these wonderful brush strokes by using these brushes like this. The bell does a fantastic job of getting that nice traditional feel to it. Okay, so I just love that. Now one thing you can do if you wanted to before you started scrubbing this in, um, a lot of people will like to tint their canvas. So I'm just going to add a layer here. And I'm going to drag this down below it. So let's say you wanted to tint your canvas. Maybe you wanted to go with like this gold ochre and a little bit of this. Well, let's just go a little bit lighter and a little bit lighter. It's not that light. And I wanted to scrub that in. And just kind of get it everywhere. And then maybe grab a different color. So a lot of people will do this. And I do it a lot on a lot of my paintings as well. I'll just kind of scrub in a um, underpainting of color. And then build on top of it. Sometimes I completely obliterate it. Sometimes I don't. You know, it just kind of depends. You can use this also to kind of lay out where the highlights and the, you know, almost do like a, a painting just with these colors, kind of a monochromatic painting, and get it laid out for how you want. So, like, if I was doing that, then what I would do is just kind of take it and lay out where I want these light source to be. So like if I want this to be a little bit lighter over here, and draw that down into there. Maybe this, this top's going to be a little bit lighter. And then this back here is going to be darker. Maybe this in here is going to be darker. And then this here. And this here. And this is just, you know, you just do it really loosey-goosey kind of thing. So this is a good way to kind of check how it's reading, how it's going to read. Like so. And I can get a good feel for where everything is and kind of what I think about it how it's looking. And then I can even blend it around a color. And that gives me an idea of how everything is going to kind of lay out. So that way, if I want to have an idea of the 
where so like so you know and I get kind of a good idea of what's going to be where and how it's going to look Start laying in some color. I also squint my eyes like this and kind of look to see how is it looking. How is it re? I also like to zoom it out using the mouse wheel and kind of take a look. Competing with each other and that kind of stuff in this early stage, anything I want to change. And like I said at the beginning, this is a little uh, crowded, is the best word for it but it's not too bad. Uh, but then you just hit the period and it brings it back up to fit the screen. But that's a good place to start from there. And so then once I've kind of got this laid out, you know, I can go back into here and then start laying in some of my color. I can lower the transparency a little bit. Idea of where it still reads. It as well. And kind of select that and then kind of maybe lay in some areas of color. At this point again you're just trying to get an idea of how you want it to read. switch over bracket keys to the right will enlarge bracket keys to the left will shrink but I can you know kind of go back let some of these come through if I want to um, it's almost like scrubbing it off with a rag if you were doing uh, oil paint in traditionally so like so it's given us a good idea of one of the things is is that I'm like okay that's a lot of green I'm going to add some yellows and leaves because you can see where I've kind of got the leaves and stuff laid out here. But it makes me realize I want to add some blue because I want some sky peeking through. I think that helps give it a good kind of look. It's like this blue that's just randomly there. And then I'm just going to maybe on another layer, I throw in some spots of blue. And I can switch brushes, you know, I can switch over to this flat brush or whatever. So that gives me some ideas for the underpainting there. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to actually merge this down. So without the line, with the line, for this, add a few other colors. So I want to put some grasses in here. So I'll grab maybe some of this green here. And I kind of like the rough wet. So I'm just going to us so it's a little bit darker in here. Lighter yellowish green. We've got some bright areas of grass here. Down here. I'm going to grab a little bit of this green. Kind of maybe fade it into the other one. The Alt button to select. And you'll notice that I'm grabbing paint, like so I hit the Alt button and grab from here. So by doing that and bringing it around, I'm developing color harmony. So my colors all start working together. And that starts to really kind of pull it together for me. Get kind of that look. You've painted with me for a while, but always with the underpainting, there is a good little bit where it's like, oh my gosh, what's going on? 
Yeah, and that's kind of where underpainting start is kind of that, you know, what is he doing? I'm just building it up and playing around with my composition and playing around with my the look and the feel of it more than anything. I know this is going to be a red barn roof. And you saw what I did there. I just grabbed this matter lake deep, grabbed this with the alt, scrubbed it on top, blended it, and then alt selected it again. And that gives me the kind of that rusty red kind of look to it. Put a key to the left to drag that down in size. And just still kind of scrub it in there. And I also want to go a little bit bigger with this. I want this wood in here echo some of that color. And some of, like the wood has rusty nails in it that over the years have just kind of you know rusted it out. And then I can hit the in and just kind of straight up and down. Scrub it in there. Okay. And then I want to go this color, go way down here, still in this neutral range. Okay. And I want to start putting in some grays. Now I'm just taking this and pulling straight up. And this is where this rough wet works great because that starts to imply wood grain. Okay, And again, I'm just trying to go roughly straight up. This barn has some crooked boards in it, or will have some crooked boards in it, I guess I should say. But, you know, when I think about it, I'm like, okay, never straight. Perfectly straight. They're just straight-ish. Trying to scrub in some of that and look and I know right now it looks kind of weird and it has kind of a clown look to it but it'll it'll work out grab some of this color here I'm just going to color this in color this in and in a minute I'm going to use more of the features for a bell like some of the water and but again, right now, I'm just trying to block in what's living where. So I don't really want it to run, because I don't want to fight that right now. You know, I just want to be able to put this kind of in where I want it. And you'll notice right there, I selected this color, but I didn't go to black. I went to a darker color, but not a black. I don't necessarily want a black in here. I might, but if I do, it's almost like white. You don't really want a pure white, you just want until you're going to use that for like highlights. Well, you don't want a pure black until you're just going to like punch up some darks, you know. So, and like I said, you can do, you can use the mixing out right here, the mix, and just be able to, uh, it's actually under view, I'm sorry, it's under window, oops. And where is it? Then you can mix on here. I just don't, um, I like to, personally, I like to mix as I'm going. Okay. And so, um, so I use the, the blend tool and kind of blend it. You can also just hold X. You can also change like this is the paint and mix the paint paint and blend so of course so I've right now I'm on paint and mix okay it's giving me some of that and a color that I want but I like just kind of going back and forth with the blend 
because then it also softens out the shadows and everything else. So anyway, it's just a personal preference is all it is. You can do it however you want. Shift the acrylic brush. Grab this dark. Look where this shadow will be. Right here. And right here. And right here. And then again, I'm being overly precise at the moment. Just trying to get a feel for how it makes sense. Okay, so I'm still painting in big shapes, you know, so I haven't started putting in a lot of details, but by laying in these streaks and these other streaks and these other random colors, it starts to give you what you're going to need to have that build up that then gives you all this cool textures and and really cool um, you know uh, really cool kind of look to it I think right here I want to have more of a muddy kind of brown so it kind of blends in it's I think actually more like this Again, by picking from the colors that are on here, I start building up some color harmony. And I want this to have this kind of a greenish brown, almost like a, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase, almost like a baby diaper brown, you know, that if you've got kids, you know what I mean. If you don't have kids, you will eventually know what I mean if you're going to have them. But it's just that, dear God, what did they do? I'm kind of brown. So this is building up more and more of this layer. So I'm just going to go along here with this line a little bit. Because I don't want these straight lines. And I'll probably just, like I said, merge this down. or um, yeah. Apply. Now that's another thing too. If you're doing photorealism, then you would want to zoom in here and do each board. We just need to give, I paint more impressionistic, so I just need to give the impression of a board. Okay, and sometimes that's, you know, drawing in one or two and then just a hint of the others because the brain is lazy. It will try to fill in the other parts. If you just give a hint here and there, it's going to say, oh, that's a board, and that's another board, and so forth. Like so. So I'm going to save this real quick. Okay, so now what I want to do is I went ahead and merged that layer down. So I want to try and start pulling some of this together, and uh, it's too busy right now. So I want to try and pull it together. So what I've done here is I've got the blend tool and then one of the other like lines or one of these other soft ones that you can do. Be able to kind of blur this. I'm just going up and down. Kind of softening some of this. And I'll explain more why here in just a second. I'm just trying to pull some of that together a little more and diffuse it. Like so. Okay. So that kind of softens and pushes that back a little bit. Okay. And now what I want to do is I'm going to jump up to a new layer and I want to start tapping into some of what Rebel is great with which is its diffusion and everything else so a couple ways I can do this um, I'm going to leave this here so like it's dry and then I'm going to kind of play around with this up in here 
So I'll grab the water color and increase the water. You can do something like the gouache brush. Good place to start. Okay, so I want to grab maybe this yellow. I've got that, this green that it's starting to diffuse into. Maybe a little bit more green. Give those a second to kind of diffuse. And just kind of play around, placing it here and there. Giving it a chance. That voodoo that it does so well. And I'm just letting this brush, the natural shape of it, do its thing. Not worrying about if I'm overlapping or any of that. So the main thing here is just kind of move your shapes around a little bit, give it a little bit of different feel. Like so. a little bit. You can see where it's kind of pulling down into here. It's kind of a neat look. You can take push W Lay a little bit of water in there. Press D. So that kind of diffused and let some of that green show through a little bit more than I wanted. So I'm just going to control Z. Come back in. D to unpause it. And all I did was I selected the blend tool again. Soften this out. Like so. Quick dry it so it doesn't blend anymore. Over to my watercolor brush. Knock that down. Grab a little bit of the spatter brush. Add in some more texture. Give that a chance to diffuse. Like so. Get a little bit of lag for my uh, video recording software. You see how that gives you some really cool blooms. I get it kind of how I like it, which I'm getting pretty close to. I'm going to pause it and then quick dry it. A different one. Get a little bit slightly different. And D. I'll keep some of these spatters because I like the way it looks like leaves. Turn on 
diffusion just a little bit and then back off and then quick dry the layer. So I think that gives a nice interesting texture to the background. I'm going to kind of soften some of it down here on the bottom so it just kind of fades away like so. I can go back and erase anything I don't like. Just like so. It's a good spot to have the line art. And that's given us an interesting softer look in the background there. Pull that line out of C. I think that will work for that part. So for this over here, we're going to start doing the barn now. So what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to select, take my selection tool. Just really quickly select that, make a new layer. I want a good place to start. This grayish color. And I'm going to just throw in some water across here. I'm going to take Lay this on. Lay this on. A little bit lighter. Lay this on. I'm going to angle it down. As you can see, I've got some nice color there. Just kind of let that lay out, kind of smear it down like so. And I just like playing around with these different brushes a little bit, kind of soften it and mess around with it. You can turn. You can't use any of these over here for like the multiplying stuff if you've got the true pigment on. If you turn it off, you can always go to overlay, or you can go to multiply. Hold for a second. Let's kind of push some of this back. What I'm trying to do is really get some of that streaky buildup that we've got. For the barn. Like so. This is just kind of a back and forth softening kind of thing. But I can switch back over to here and go with something like the Sumi Bristle. And just kind of streak it down. Give it a chance to kind of play out on that wet area. You can see how you start getting some really interesting textures. Now I've got the water turned down so it's not spreading a whole lot, but it is spreading some. And I can then grab some from some of the other colors. Put 
that spread out. Spots here and there. Like so. You can even switch to the pencil tool. Sketch in where some of those boards would be. I define it a little bit. And like I said, this is one of those things you don't want to sit here and do every board. But it's that quick vertical line that kind of gives it that look and feel. of old wood in a barn just kind of sitting there and clean up any of the stuff that you want to like so but by using that little bit of diffusion and then some non-diffusing stuff and a little bit more diffusion and some non diffusion, you start to really lay out and because it's on this layer, you, know, you can play around with opacities, you can do all sorts of stuff there. Control D and quick dry. And then I want to control D. I mean not control D. Selection tool. Like so. And now some of the same type of stuff, just pulling up. So, and then switch back to the pencil. Oops. Just adding in some vertical lines, like so. And we start to get kind of that. Now you can zoom it in and take a look and see, you know, what do you like, what do you want to change. Quick dry that just in case. Make that corner pop a little more. These boards. But see how the layering builds up that, that nice texture and that you really kind of play around. And again, this is something that's really unique to Ravel in the fact that it, it has such a traditional feel and look to it. Push this back a little bit. Grab a little bit of that to make it look like it's peeking through. I'm going to grab a little bit of this kind of color. I'm going to switch back to my Sumi. Just kind of let this slightly diffuse and play off of itself. And these all become kind of some neat little areas. color and building up texture like so really cool looking barn now this over here I want to do play around this a little bit that's what I want to do 
Let's drag down some color here to kind of sell this old tin groove kind of being you know kind of pitted and rusted and see I put too much water in there so it's kind of diffusing out so I'm just going to pause it quick dry it and pause it you got to be willing to you know play around let it do its thing but the nice thing about it is if it starts to get away from you just pause it with by hitting D and then come back to it Just kind of following that same line there. So what I want to do is give the hint. Whoops. Also whoops. Of some corrugated tin with run to be similar. See how it's kind of mimicking that. So what I and then I'm going to take my selection tool. Just quickly select it. Alt to deselect some of it. Like so. And this is just random. And now what I want to do is I'm going to W, add some water. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to my SUMI. I'm going to select with Alt. I'm going to brush some of this in. The diffuse. Give me a little bit of water. Ever so slightly. Again, go in the same direction. I get some stuff I like. Like that. I push D. Quick dry it. I can do the same with a couple of splatters. Unpause it. Pause it. Unpause it. Pause it. For color. Now let's go with that rust color, but let's come a little bit lighter. Down here. Unpause it. Maybe grab the Sumi again. A darker color. Blow tool. Keep an eye on it. Pause. Quick drop. Control D. All right. So I'm going to go back to my pencil, grab a little of this really dark color. Some of those areas, I feel like I want to put a hole in the roof. Like that, punch up the aged quality of it. Like so. Clean up this edge just a little bit. grab this lighter one and I'm going to go here and there the bottom just make it kind of stand out a little bit more on the spot like so crisp up this edge here too like so and then I want to clean up This edge. Any place I think there should be more darkness. Add that.
that's got our barn pretty well established for now. We can always come back and crisp it up a little bit or change some boards or move stuff around. Kind of depends on how much stuff we want to add to it. I think that starts to really pull it forward, that more gentle background. Now what we need to do is actually seat it in here because it looks like it's floating. So let's do that, but first I'm going to save it real quick. So now that we've got that saved, let's move into this area here. And I'll probably come back and work more on this as well, but I want to kind of go from this area to this area and kind of bring it forward a little bit. And there's some other stuff I want to do to the barn too, probably. But right now, let's do that. So I'm going to come up to the create a new layer. And let's look at the have here. So we've got several different ones. We could go to the fan brush, rake oily, and all those, and play around with those. And those are good ones. Um, but we can also stay with something like the rough wet again. Select that. Start kind of pulling this up in here. In. Just scrubbing in some I'm really just kind of dealing with the shapes of it right now. Feel for how it should look. And again, just kind of playing around with the color and the, the forms. And that starts to seed it just by kind of choppy little strokes to rough it in much pressure just trying to get it kind of laid in there I'm going to do that with the dirt kind of depends on how much you want the grass to grow around the barn and everything else down in there a little bit. Like so. I'm going to grab a little bit of this color and blend it in a little bit to kind of break it up. Kind of getting some of that smeared in there. We can change to the and just kind of scrub in. Any of these that you don't like, you can control Z it, or you can just kind of blend it back into it. You can also switch over to the pencil. And go with something, and you can stick with the 2B. To be or not to be. Also go to the liner brush, reduce the water down, make it really small. Kind of play around with how bright.
grasses and individuals so like this is really grown up kind of thing and that starts to really kind of set that back in there a few light spots here and there grass is hitting a little bit more. You can add some of the dark. Bring some of this forward. Like so. And then one of the things I like to do is also when I'm doing that is maybe grab kind of an off white. I don't want white bluish. Almost white. Tap that in. And you can let it diffuse out like that. You can also pause the diffusion if you want to. And quick dry it. And then unpause it. Same thing. Pause it. Like that. Just here and there. I think it looks nice. And so that starts to give us a little bit of the you feel the grasses kind of come through and everything else. So right in here, I want to fix some of that. So I'm going to go between the barn and that other grass. And what I want to do is, keeping that where it's at, I think I'll take and just kind of rough in. side just like so it just kind of adds enough to grab the liner and just kind of add Interest. X back there, back here as well. It just add some interest. Control click there. Select this. Shift. I don't know what I'm doing. Just control D and it just cleans up my edges real quick. Pushes that back. So I'm gonna quick dry it. I'm gonna try to clean some of this up right here. I'm gonna go to the eraser. I'm gonna go to the spatter. Scrub over that. Break that up. Like so. Helps start pushing it back a little bit and, and gives you some more interest. Quick try, let's go back down to this one. E, go back to soft round. Like so. And that gives us that. So now I'm going to do some of the grass up here on this layer. And I'm going to go ahead and put another layer over top of that just so I can kind of preserve this down here to have it peek through. And then I'll come back to here, go with the rough wet again. Grab some of this here. And just scrub in Okay. So let's do these trees. They're kind of being neglected here, so let's do those. This one. And I'm going to do this. I'm going to hide these layers. So I've got my selection tool, so I'm just going to select where it pretty much was, is. Like so, and then shift. Like 
so. Back on. Now that leaves a little bit here. So that's fine. Just shift. Drag it down off. So let's look at some of these other ones that we have here. The palette knife dry. We can see what that's going to give us. Grab a little bit of this brown. Just kind of following the shape of the tree that I had laid out. Starts to give us an interesting to start with. I'm going to add this right here too. I'm going to go ahead and add it as a shift. Come up through here. I want to get rid of this. Well, I'll worry about it in a minute, but I just want to kind of change up some of this. Nice feel to it. I'm just quickly putting this in here. Barn color. Maybe this is wood from. This is just kind of a back and forth game with it. Kind of switch between them. This is just kind of a up and down, back and forth deal. Okay, and it depends how much you want to build this up, you know. So you can take, for example, really kind of put in, if you know you're going to have a little bit of light come through. Do that as well. You can soften those. You need when to kind of break up some of the wood, like so. And that will start to give you a little bit of that grainy kind of feel. Okay. Control D. Come back to here. No. To get rid of that. And start kind of breaking that up. And I can also take shift. Thank you, Macav. Yeah, I appreciate that. So I can do something like that and then come back to like the palette knife. Just gives a little bit different feel and flavor. doing it. And this is just random shapes. I'm not, you know, I'm just squiggling back and forth and letting it keep what it wants to keep. I can even go back to the blend tool and let that kind of blend it. So let me do that just a little bit more. I really like the way it looks. And that's just, you know, that's one of the things. Play around. You know, I don't always know a thousand percent what's going to work and what's not. It's just a matter of 
you know, playing around with it and saying, hey, did that work? Oh, yeah, it did. Okay, well, here's how I did that. So do that. So the moral of the story is don't be afraid to play around. Because you can sometimes get some really interesting looks. So I kind of like that. Something like here. Now, I need to see something here. So I'm going to do, so I'm going to come down here and see. I'm just going to get rid of some of this. Pause the diffusion. And I can help it not get away from me like it did just for me just there. And let's turn these back on. Like so. I think that works for that. I'm going to hide some of these limbs as well in here. So I'm going to want these to be a little bit more of a yellowish color. So let's start with that. Throwing in some splatters. Kind of get that feeling of leaves. I'm going to unpause the diffusion. And pause it. Quick dry it. Go back to here. Go back to here. Go back to here. Can break it up a little bit. Like so. Quick dry that does is give you a space to kind of pause your eye and distinguish some of these shapes from the other ones. And you can always give them the soft blend. Just kind of give it a soft nudge, if you will. And we can also go to the shapes here. Again, we're just kind of soften it back. And then just keep kind of grabbing Some of these, and like I said, it gives you just that impression of, oh, there's leaves here, complete splatters together. And you can even erase your tool, erase out any that you don't like.
floaty ones that you just don't care for. Kind of push those back too. And again, it really kind of depends how much you want to keep stuff, how much you want to erase stuff, how much you want to just kind of play around with it. Again, by just having these kind of leaf shapes here and there, it really gives you that feel that, this, uh, that these are leaves and they're just blobs. All they are. The important thing is to just keep selecting from where you're at and then get the edges look like leaves. And hit over the bar a little bit so that'll kind of push it back. Like so. Okay. And that gives you some nice looking quick and easy leaves. So now we need to work on oops, need to work on some of this down here to kind of tie it all together. So let me move this up. So I'm also going to pull this as well. You can see how by building all those textures and stuff in the background, it just keeps adding those different layers and different layers and different layers. That feeling of stuff. So now what I want to do is work on some of this right through here and some of this and then put in the fence posts and some uh, additional lighting on these trees. Actually, for the lighting on the trees, let's go ahead and do that. Um, What I want is the blue. Let me just undo that. The pencil. So I really like having kind of this reflected light coming through. To me it's just kind of intriguing. If you don't want to do it, I just kind of like it. It kind of helps pull some of it together. Interesting. Such interesting people with such interesting lives. For some of that pop of the light. Nothing crazy. Just some hot spots here and there. Kind of softening it. Like so. So that kind of helps because it ties it in with this kind of highlight and so forth. Let me save this real quick. So like I said, let's do this part right here. So I'm going to make a new layer. Now what I'm going to do for this is I'll grab some of this. I'm just going to spatter, spatter, pause the diffusion, spatter.
run pause, pause, control T. All right, so now I've got this kind of smushed. So what I'm doing is I'm stretching this and kind of laying it flat. And that automatically makes it feel like it's laying in there. Delete it. I can switch to my eraser. And I can go you know, over here. Get rid of that. I can leave some of those if I want to erase some back here and there. We can. Smudge it a little bit. Like so. Smudge it a little bit. Like this one. If I wanted to, I could turn that off and go to Multiply. And then that multiplies it underneath this right here, which I think I'm going to do. Erase or smudge out some of this. Let's see. Yeah, so that starts to give me an interesting look. I'm going to bring that down. I think normal looks better. All right, so we can unpause it. Just a few, almost like we did with the leaves. Just um, a few spots here and there. And so now I'm doing this little comma stroke. Pull in its So remembering that my light is coming from the left. And this a little bit. Grab some of that across. Bring it up into there. Same here. Like so. Into there a little bit, and that kind of gives that same feeling. Just kind of throw it. The key here is just kind of stay horizontal. That's interesting and looking like it's laying in there. Up on the side a little bit as well, so that becomes more of a bank. And do a little bit of that here as well. So I want to grab this tree shadow coming across. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that. Light's so dark, maybe. Smear it around. Oops. Pull that in a little bit. Ties it into there. Again, just something kind of soft and grainy. with that feel. I think that'll work for it. I'm going to pull in some of these grasses and start laying some of that in. So let me grab that liner. Up so I can just smudge some of this in to kind of tile that first. Like so. Tied in to 
together by varying some of these greens and going back and forth. I think some peek through and some not. Really kind of gives the feeling of an old trail or barn that's just been kind of abandoned and is growing over. Now I think I can tie some of this in. I'm going to put some flowers in here kind of like down there to kind of echo that. And again, kind of tie it together. So, so this is kind of pulling together. The posts. So I'm going to go to my selection tool. And I'm going to just add. Let's pick Pencil tool, charcoal to two B. So I want these guys to be really old looking down into the grass a little bit. Grab a little bit of the kind of a reflective light, like so. So what I want to do now is kind of add some highlights and shadows. And I need to add those to this. And pause. These flowers in here. A 
that together. All right. I'm just going to merge that one down like so. Now what I want looks all right. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm doing is just adding in those, pull some of the, push some of the darks, and pull out some of the lights here in just a second. <clears throat> It's almost like glazing, I guess, really. But the thing with it is, is that you just don't just take the eraser and kind of erase out certain spots. Oops, seed it a bit more as well. Fades it in like so. So now what I want to do is go to here and come over here to the yellow and tell it OK. Overlay layer. I'm going to do pretty much the exact same thing. I think there should be some highlights like so. And then if there's any that I think are too strong, like I think this is a little too strong, get back. Stark. I'll come over to this peachy color. And just kind of soften it. Oops. I can lower the opacity just a little bit. So it's not too in your face. Like so. Have some reflective lighting. So that always kind of adds a little extra something. At least I think it does. And maybe just come over here. And 
me go to here. Just a little bit more. Here and there. Like so. Vignette it. Well, pretty good. So, I think this is kind of wrapping up, and I would love to hear what you thought about it. If you got something out of it, if there's something else I could have explained better, something that you might like to have seen, uh, just let me know, and we can go from there. I guess really, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, let me know below.